Hello, I'm Peter Michaels. The film you're about to see is a documentary on the current mining system used today in Guyana. Let us now begin the explanation of the current diamond process. The land is first cleared of all organic vegetation. This process usually takes one day to complete. All of the trees are removed along with any shrub and vines. Many of these trees are partially eaten out by termites, leaving the area dangerous to workers working below. So clearing of the land facilitates safety to workers, as often tree limbs can fall day or night throughout the jungle without warning. This process is shared by each member of the camp, with the exception of the cook, which is known in the bush as the bayir. Most often, a chainsaw is used to fell these trees and cut them up to smaller pieces of wood for removal. Upon the removal of the vegetation, the pit is started by boring down a hole by the usage of a water jet and a gravel pump. The man holding the water jet is known as a jet man, making a slurry of the topsoil clay and allowing the slurry to travel to the man controlling the throttle of the gravel pump. This man is known as the Maroc man and it is his job to suck up all slurry and gravel while not losing prime of the pump. This man's foot is always in motion as to not let any obstruction of twigs or stones to not block the hose or pump. This material travels from the suction hose to the gravel pump to PVC pipe all the way to the lavador jig which captures all the diamonds and gold. This discharge goes to fill in the previous pit to leave the land in a condition to facilitate further organic growth. After the topsoil is removed, the gravel containing the diamonds and gold is washed into drains and carefully washed clean to remove all of the precious mineral. When the Moroc man gives the okay that all of the gravel is passed and the pipes are clear, we will begin the process calling, called washing down. The Moroc man makes certain there is plenty of water used in the cleaning of the drain and Moroc hole. This also serves to help clear the lavador of unwanted gravel in the lavador and allows time enough for all diamonds to settle in the bottom of the lavador. The lavador is first drained of water and then carefully sweeping all gravel and diamonds into a shovel and put into five gallon buckets for removal. This process takes a few moments as is to make sure no diamonds are left behind. This is done with a small scrub brush and a little water. Often enough there will be diamonds stuck to the side walls in the clay and with a little scraping of the sides are necessary. The jigs are uniquely designed and there has been very few instances in which any gold or diamonds are lost from this machine. The lavador creates a fluidized bed in which allows the gold and gemstones to settle. The buckets are removed from the lavador and brought to a shallow pond to commence the process called busting a sieve. There are three sieves of different size used to separate the gravel from the diamonds. Beneath the third sieve is a large batel or gold pan to capture any gold removed from the lavador. As a general rule, the first sieve captures any diamonds five carats and larger. The second sieve captures diamonds two carats to five carats. And the third sieve captures all diamonds from seven points to two carats. These are just general rules because there are nine different crystalline shapes in which diamonds are formed through nature. The busting of a sieve process involves shaking to settle the diamonds along with a spinning action to concentrate the diamonds to the center of the sieve and separating the lighter gravel to the outside of the sieve. As a general rule, most sieves are busted as much as three times to ensure no loss due to carelessness or neglect. Once a sieve is busted, it is given to the general manager of the camp, and he 
and any chosen others help in the removal of the diamonds. You may observe other dark items in the center of the sieve, which will be carbon, tin, rutile, and other diamond indicators. The rule is to work from the outside onward to the inside with small wedges of wood, which help in the removal process. All diamonds are put into a jar of water, which helps to drop the diamonds upon touching the surface of the water with the wedges of wood. This process takes about 20 minutes or so, depending on the diamonds recovered and the experience of the miners. The excitement begins at this point, and having observers from neighboring camps is quite common to help share the excitement of the past few days' work. Throughout this film, you will witness diamond productions from numerous camps. These diamonds are a product from three days to seven days' work in each case. During the filming of this picture, large single diamonds 11 carats in size to 23 carats were recovered and as much as 200 carats in diamonds per pit were recovered as well. But due to the sensitive nature of these large finds, they would not allow me to film these for fear of reprisal. Diamond miners are a bit of a secret society in which they share little information with outsiders as it may come to haunt them later for what they have disclosed. Being a dredge owner myself in this area poised no threat to them as I have paid the dues dearly to become a diamond miner myself and know that if you say very little and listen a lot you are much better off. Once you have some experience in Guyana finding diamonds is as easy as falling off a log. I know of one remote place when four days of work recovered over 600 carats of diamonds. Now we'll show you the cleanup of the diamonds themselves. First, the diamonds are put on a cloth to dry them for the separation of any unwanted carbon, tin, rutile, or rocks that got into the jar along with the diamonds from the last process. The dry diamonds are carefully, one by one, separated from the stone and indicators by finger or by tweezer, and this may vary from camp to camp but regardless, they are separated by hand. In short time, the separation is completed. The diamonds are quite clear, and approximately 82% of Guyana diamonds are of gem quality and go to cutters. You may observe that the diamonds show here a slight tint, but this is due to the green opaque tarp overhead giving a false coloration upon these gemstones. In the next cleanup, upcoming, you'll notice the diamonds are without any tint due to the change in camp tarp. These diamonds in the rough are mostly clear, white, occasionally green and yellow, sometimes black, blue, and most rare, red. Nothing will surpass the beauty of these rough diamonds Throughout the remainder of this film, you will see these cleanups. You will observe the consistent beauty of these diamonds. If there is one thing I wish you to remember, it would be this. Diamonds just like these can be yours. Visualize in your mind, you're looking at beautiful diamonds. Nice, right? But now let's visualize you putting those diamonds in your own pocket. Now, how would you feel? What we are looking at now is approximately 83 carats recovered from the pit. The maximum capacity of the scale is 50 carats, so one is weighed in two parcels. In Guyana, there are numerous diamond buyers 
whom will buy your diamonds for cash seven days a week, or you may care to have your larger diamonds cut for a small fee per carat. You can export your diamonds as well upon paying a low fee to the Guyana Republic. Through my observation here, many of the diamonds sold here in Guyana end up in Brazil, Belgium, and New York. There are about 10 diamond buyers in Georgetown, and I know of one alone whom buys about two kilos of diamonds per month. I had now visited my friend called Fat Man to observe his findings from the last pit. You may now observe the clear, clean coloration upon the diamonds, now with a different color tarp overhead. Later I traveled to a local shop owner at the landing to see what his company had done in production for that week. He was ever so delighted to show me his findings and was quite proud, I might add. Indoor lighting does not do a lot of justice to these diamonds, but you observing about 150 carats of stones. My friend Sarah did his cleanup and let us see what the results were from his few days of work. What I might add is he did not receive much in qu quantity, but he did make for it, make up for this in quality. The one large diamond weighed 4.38 carats. Very good stone, very good, uh, excellent quality. looking at now is my friend Peter, who had a nice wash down, receiving about uh, 75 carats in diamonds with one stone, 4.4 carats of diamond. Very nice stone. I went to go see my friend Coochie right down the creek and Coochie washed down with a nice parcel this is approximately uh, 37 carats with one diamond just over four carats in size this one woman is a dredge owner and finally, our company got in the picture. And this is my partner cleaning his stones. This is Mario. And right here, Mario has very nice stones.